The MacBook Air has never been considered a pro device, but I think the base model M4 MacBook Air changes that. The M4 MacBook Air was recently released back in March of this year, and I just snagged the 13-inch base model on Amazon for 850 bucks, which in my opinion is an absolute steal when you see what it's capable of. Normally it's a thousand bucks, so it's still a pretty good deal and even a price drop from the previous M3 base MacBook Air. My name is Cameron Perry, and I've been a professional video editor and motion graphics animator for the last 13 years. And to me, the MacBook Air has always been a secondary portable device for travel and for media consumption and that sort of thing. I've never realistically viewed the MacBook Air as a laptop being capable of doing any kind of real video editing work, but this MacBook Air honestly surprised me. Let's first talk about the specs we're working with here. Like I said, this is the base model 13 inch M4 MacBook Air. The M4 finally comes standard with 16 gigabytes of RAM and unfortunately still comes standard with the tiny 256 gigabyte SSD. The M4 chip has a 10 core CPU and an eight core GPU. Design wise, it's the same as the previous generation, but we've got this beautiful new sky blue color, which I of course had to get. It honestly kind of looks silver, which is not a bad thing. So just so you know, this isn't going to be a comprehensive review of all of the features of the MacBook Air. This video is really intended to show what this machine is capable of doing if you're a video editor or you're a motion designer like I am. But I do want to highlight some things I like and some things that I don't like before we get into any of that. I love the look and feel of this laptop. Again, the design is not new, but it's probably as close to perfection as it can get, honestly. It's thin, it's well built, it's beautiful. This goes without saying, but this is an amazing travel device. If you're a content creator on the go, the MacBook Air's form factor is absolutely amazing. The whole package is small, including the power brick. Just look at how small the power brick is compared to my 16 inch MacBook Pro's power brick. Throwing this laptop into a backpack, you don't even feel it, it's so light. I've seen a noticeable difference in the overall responsiveness and snappiness of this laptop. It seems more responsive than my M3 MacBook Pro. Browsing the web or opening apps is so responsive and smooth. The new M4 chip is like lightning, for real. It is super fast. I love the battery life on this thing. Again, if you're a content creator on the go, battery life is important. In my testing, I can easily get a full day of work in, even doing more intensive tasks like video editing and motion graphics animation. One thing I wanted to talk about is the screen briefly. There's been quite a bit of criticism that the screen is only 60 hertz. And while I think it would be great to have 120 hertz display, I honestly don't care that much. My life isn't any different using 120 hertz display versus a 60 hertz display like this one. With that said, there are a couple areas that could use improvement. The 256 gigabyte SSD that comes standard on the base model is just way too small for anyone to be honest. You can make it work if you have to, but you're really gonna have to stay on top of deleting apps or files that you're not using at all times. Now I know this is Apple's affordable option, but I think the main gripe with the 256 gigabyte SSD is that upgrading to a 512 gigabyte SSD, which still isn't a great size, costs $200, which is honestly ridiculous. Again, you can make it work and use external SSDs and whatnot, but it's certainly not ideal. If you're a content creator, you're probably gonna be using SSDs anyway, but again, base model SSD is just way too small. Another thing that I'd love to see is an SD card slot and an HDMI port. When Apple brought those back to the MacBook Pros, it seriously made such a difference in my life. I know this is the MacBook Air, but it would just be really nice to have. There's really not much to dislike about the base model M4 MacBook Air, but can it perform? This is the reason we're all here. How well does this perform editing video and doing motion graphics animation? The short answer is it's very capable. Now before I dive in, I just wanna let you guys know I'm not a benchmark guy. I'm a real world performance guy. So I'll run some little comparison tests and things like that, but I'm primarily speaking to real world performance I've personally experienced with this laptop. Let's start with video editing. My editor of choice is Adobe Premiere Pro. I'll tell you, having edited with DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro, you can expect Adobe Premiere Pro to perform the worst out of the three. So just keep that in mind that the performance you'll see in Premiere is going to be even better with DaVinci and Final Cut. So editing 4K timelines in Premiere, seamless. I shoot a lot on the Sony FX3 and DJI Osmo Pocket 3, both compressed formats, and I've had zero issues with dropped frames. I'm even able to throw on a color grade, audio effects, and warp stabilizer on a lot of the B-roll, and still no dropped frames. By the way, I'm playing all of this back at full res. 
I actually edited my entire last video, the ROG Zephyrus G14 video, on this laptop, and it was just as smooth as my M3 MacBook Pro ever is. Even scrubbing through the timeline is pretty smooth. To be honest, this shocked me. The last base model MacBook Air I tried to edit with in Premiere was the 13-inch M2 MacBook Air, and this same project file would have been impossible to edit on that laptop. I could get away with doing some really short edits or proxy editing, but throwing in the source footage with color grading and effects and all of that, no way, not happening. The performance boost here has a lot to do with the now standard 16 gigabytes of RAM on this laptop. It makes a huge difference. But also the raw processing power of the M4 chip is better as well because it's got an extra two CPU cores over the previous generation. I can't speak to the M3 MacBook Air because I've never used it, but this is a massive improvement over my base model M2 MacBook Air. One thing I'd like to note here is that if you're editing 6K RAW or 6K ProRes, the performance is still going to be buttery smooth. Uncompressed formats like RAW and ProRes tend to perform well because the computer doesn't need to uncompress the files to play them back in your editing software. I did pull in some old 6K Red RAW footage from back when I shot on the Red Komodo, and sure enough, buttery smooth. To be fair, I didn't edit a whole timeline of clips together and add effects and all of that, but again, I know from past experience that RAW formats and ProRes are often easier to edit than compressed formats coming from cameras like my FX3, even when the resolution is higher on the RAW or uncompressed formats. So let's talk exporting. The M4 MacBook Air is a passively cooled laptop, which means it doesn't have a fan. This can present an issue when you're pushing this machine hard for long periods of time because the performance can really become throttled, and I definitely experienced that on this device when exporting. That same timeline I showed you earlier is a little over 11 minutes long. I export all of my videos at 1080p because hot take, 4K is kind of overkill for YouTube. I keep it simple and export to H.264 with an adaptive high bitrate. The M4 MacBook Air was able to export the whole timeline in exactly seven minutes, which is honestly pretty good but there was a big difference exporting the same timeline from my M3 MacBook Pro. It only took five minutes and two seconds to export. So yeah, there is a gap there, but let's be honest, seven minutes versus five minutes is not that big of a deal if you're on a budget. I bought my M3 MacBook Pro for around $1,800, whereas this of course cost me only $850. Obviously, I don't have the most recent generation of the MacBook Pro. That would, of course, create an even bigger performance gap, likely, but you get my point. At the end of the day, what's most important to me as an editor is that you can actually edit and not have any hiccups. The export time isn't as crucial for me because it's a great opportunity, honestly, to get up and take a walk, take a break, grab a snack, or whatever. Now, obviously, if you're going to do some super intense edits with hour plus long timelines and tons of effects, or you're working with super complex node trees in DaVinci Resolve, you're probably going to hit a ceiling on this machine pretty quickly. <laughs> but I personally never do work that intense. And I'd argue that most content creators and editors are also not going to be doing that intensive work. Let's switch gears and talk about performance inside of Adobe After Effects. After Effects is my bread and butter and I spend most of my working hours in this application. And for any of you that have done work inside of After Effects, you know how clunky it can be at times. Depending on how complex your project file is, previewing or playing back your animations can be a little bit like pulling teeth. Preview performance to me personally is what I care about most when I'm looking at a computer's capabilities. I decided to open up a project file I worked on a while back that had a lot going on. Tons of keyframes, tons of expressions, and a decent amount of effects. I felt like this would be a good middle of the road project file to test preview performance on. I decided to compare it to the preview performance on my M3 MacBook Pro, and to make it fair, I purged the disk cache and the RAM on both machines before previewing. For those of you who don't know, After Effects will cache frames for future playback, so purging the disk cache and RAM will force the computer to start from scratch and recache those frames. I decided to time how long each laptop would take to preview and cache the first 15 seconds of animation. My M3 MacBook Pro took 36 seconds to preview and cache the first 15 seconds of this animation. My M4 MacBook Air kind of destroyed my M3 MacBook Pro and only took 25 seconds to preview and cache the same 15 seconds of animation. When I ran this comparison, I actually didn't believe it and I did it again and I got the same result. So does this mean that my M4 MacBook Air is better in After Effects than my M3 MacBook Pro? In some cases, actually, yes. It absolutely does mean that it's better. I do think, however, if you are working with tons of effects and plugins, the M4 Air is going to start to show some cracks. It's also worth noting that the amount of RAM you have is going to make a big difference. 
My M3 MacBook Pro only has 18 gigabytes of RAM. More RAM is going to give you better preview performance overall in After Effects. So these machines are actually pretty comparable in a lot of ways. For what I do, honestly though, 16 gigabytes is usually enough RAM in After Effects, but I'm not usually working on ultra intense projects. And when I do, that's what I've got my ROG Zephyrus for. So is the base model 13 inch M4 MacBook Air actually a pro laptop? In my opinion, yeah. Many creatives could legit use this as their main computer. I can't believe I'm saying that, but yeah, it's that good. If you do photography or graphic design and you're using Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, really anything in the creative suite, you're going to have absolutely no issues with this laptop. This is a really capable device. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the M4 MacBook Air. Is this a great bang for buck? I think it is. Let me know your thoughts. Also, let me know if I've left anything out that would be helpful. I'm really trying to improve these videos and provide as much value as possible. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. That'll really go a long way in helping me grow this channel. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.